Tropic Thrills From the Adventures of Peter Vole Written and illustrated by Erica Guernsey Narrated and produced by Stephen Garnett It was a scorching hot summer day. The silence of the stiflingly humid air was only broken by the sound of a lonely fly buzzing and flitting around dizzily. Eddie, the scientist mouse, stared morosely with watchful eyes at the small winged creature dancing in his workshop where he had been putting the finishing touches to his new biplane. Without warning, Peter Vole appeared at the entrance, wearing only duck print swim shorts and a straw hat. Eddie glanced at him in surprise. Peter, what the dickens is that ridiculous get-up you're wearing? We were going to try out my plane today. Do you want to come dressed like this? Oh, blast, Peter winced. It completely slipped my mind. Do you think people will stare or laugh at me at the airport when we land? Eddie pondered how to answer his best friend and decided to encourage him. Otherwise, they would never leave the workshop. Don't worry. If you feel comfortable, it'll be okay. Anyway, it is scorching hot today. But at least change your straw hat for a flying helmet. While Eddie was putting on his flight suit... His thoughts revolved around his friend. It occurred to him that he had never seen Peter act confidently or bravely. He suspected that Peter suffered from low self-esteem, constantly worrying about what others thought about him and what he did. The plane is safe to fly, isn't it? asked Peter fearfully. Oh, I hope so. We will see, laughed Eddie. You hope so? cried the little vole, astonished. But Eddie couldn't hear him. Peter's exclamation of fear was drowned out by the noise of the engine. The plane taxied down the runway, accelerated, and began to lift off. Peter's heart was pounding with fright. But after breaking through the clouds, they could admire the bright, fabulous landscape from above. Then dark clouds started to gather on the horizon, and soon they entirely engulfed the small plane. I can barely see, seethed Eddie. Did you say something? asked Peter, but Eddie didn't hear him either. I have no idea where we are now, called Eddie breathlessly. Meanwhile, Peter had relaxed so much that his usual anxiety turned into naughtiness. He leant out of the window and reached out to catch the clouds. Surprised by Peter's outrageous behaviour, Eddie lost his concentration on his piloting just long enough to make one sudden movement that resulted in a collision with a misguided seagull, which flew straight into the propeller. Eddie completely lost control of the plane. 
My gracious mouse whiskers, cried Eddie frantically. He felt a surge of fear, and his heart jumped into his throat. Wherever we are now, we've got no other choice but to land. Suddenly the plane luckily emerged from the clouds, and land appeared far below. It was a tropical island full of palm trees and other amazing tropical plants and coffee plantations. One of the coffee picker mice lifted his head to the sky as he heard the loud, strange noise and shouted, Look! An aeroplane! Heading straight towards the plantation! The working mice broke into a run towards where they thought the plane would land. Meanwhile, Eddie performed a successful emergency landing right in the middle of the vast coffee plantation. How lucky we are that we found a field and could land. That was a narrow escape. Eddie breathed a little more easily. He whipped off his helmet, looking behind him to check on his friend, and saw that Peter had fainted from fright. A few minutes later, other residents of the island showed up to see the cause of the unfamiliar noise. How are you? What has happened to your friend? inquired a local mouse, with ample girth and twisted whiskers. He fainted, replied Eddie shortly. Well, uh, follow me. I will take you to our bus, said the paunchy mouse helpfully, twirling his hefty whiskers. Eddie jumped down from the plane and helped Peter out of his seat with the assistance of the locals. Oh, my God! Goodness, called the paunchy mouse. Where on earth do you come from? What is your friend wearing? If I may ask, please don't talk about it in front of him. He is a very sensitive soul, replied Eddie. Upon my word, <laughs> cried the wife of the paunchy mouse in surprise. They are nothing but urban rodents, I say. A few hours later, as Peter opened his eyes, he was surprised to find himself in a lovely bedroom and feeling slightly groggy. Fresh air drifted through the open balcony door as the gentle breeze ruffled the tall hedge of the nearby palm trees. The little vole sprang out of bed and strolled out to the balcony. His jaw dropped when he saw the magnificent view coffee plantations stretched as far as the eye could see, and the estate was surrounded by palm trees and other tropical plants. The idyllic silence of the jungle-like atmosphere was broken by the vibrating songs of exotic birds. Beyond the estate, Peter could see the vague vista of the ocean, and hear the soothing sound of the waves lapping on the shore. Suddenly he heard a familiar voice. Eddie and Manuel, the plantation owner, were walking in the garden after dinner right under his window. Peter called to them. Eddie lifted his head in the direction of the sound and waved at his friend to join them. A few minutes later the friends joyfully greeted each other, and Manuel joined them. Ah, my dear friend, I am so glad you are still among the living, said Manuel with an impish grin. Pardon, but where? asked the tiny vole with a puzzled look. I hope you rested well. I took the liberty of uh, sorting you out a slightly better outfit, so you would not uh, stick out in the crowd. Peter took Manuel's unwelcome words so much to heart that they completely spoiled his appetite for dinner. The next day, Eddie asked Peter to swear that he wouldn't go near the plane and would let him work in peace. As the residents of the island had no plane and thus no fuel, Eddie had to work out how to produce fuel from nothing. This serious research needed his undivided attention. Suddenly, he had a crazy idea. He would produce the fuel he needed from coffee. 
Peter's curiosity was piqued so much that he went searching for a pair of binoculars to observe his friend's activity as closely as possible. To blend into the environment completely, he covered himself with huge green leaves. I have never drank coffee. What does it taste like? wondered Peter. It was nearly noon, and Eddie had begun to feel hungry, so he decided to take a short lunch break. As soon as Eddie left his temporary workshop, Peter leapt at the opportunity to slip into the room and taste the coffee. The black beverage, which hadn't yet been converted to fuel, waited on the table in a large cooking pot, ready to be used in the experiment. Peter couldn't resist the temptation to take a sip of the unfamiliar drink. He took a glass out of the cupboard and filled it to the brim with the black beverage. Oh, uh, yuck, is that bitter? He cried in disgust. The little vole looked for another drink to get rid of the horrible taste in his mouth. As he glanced around the workshop, his eyes were drawn to a bottle of raspberry syrup resting on the shelf. Eddie had put it aside for himself just in case he was thirsty and longed for a cold, sweet drink in the heat. All at once a strange idea popped into Peter's head. What if I sweeten the coffee with the syrup to make it drinkable? He asked himself. Mm, yum, that's much better, <laughs> sighed Peter, and a contented smile spread across his face. He tried to slink out of the workshop unnoticed, but he accidentally knocked into a shelf storing sacks of sugar, which began to sway. One of the top sacks fell and slammed onto the table. The table rocked and the bottle of raspberry syrup started to wobble. The mouth of the sack was only loosely tied, and its white contents spilt all over the floor. When the tumbling bottle of syrup at last surrendered to gravity, it landed heavily on the ground where it shattered and showered the already white floor with the sticky red liquid. Leaving the workshop in a state of complete disorder, Peter walked down the zigzag path of the estate, rimmed with palm trees, as if nothing had happened. After a while, he noticed that he had already marched out of the tropical forest, and was right in the middle of the coffee plantation. He greeted the working mice gleefully, and enthusiastically offered them his help. The coffee pickers accepted his assistance without suspicion and tried to teach him how to harvest the coffee cherries. But too much coffee had made Peter so hyper that he couldn't pay attention. High from the drink, the little vol started to pick the small cherries as fast as he could, regardless of whether they were ripe or not. He looked like a little, invisible reaping machine which had harvested and shaken the trees at top speed. The pickers' jaws dropped when they saw that Peter had created complete havoc on the plantation in the blink of an eye. Running along the rows, abruptly he stumbled and began to roll down a slope. Sometimes when he struck some bigger stones he even bounced for a while, as if he were a little fur ball, and the cherries in his basket were scattered to the four winds. Stop that crazy ball! shouted the paunchy mouse, appalled. When Eddie returned from his lunch break, and saw his workshop in a state of utter chaos, he could hardly believe his eyes. Dear me! What's this? I'll bet Peter had a paw in it. It took Eddie until sunset to clean up the sticky mass of sugar and syrup that was all over the floor, as the flood of summer light began to ebb, the mellow rays of the sun conjured glowing colours on the outstretched canvas of the sky. With the purple, orange and pink hues of sunset, cooler air arrived, and brought pleasant relief to the residents at the end of the long, sizzling hot day. The anger of the coffee pickers evaporated quickly. Ha ah, by Jove! Those crazy city folks. <laughs> Upon my word, uh, it's such a queer thing. It doesn't happen every day. <laughs> the paunchy mouse told his wife with a chuckle. 
As the hours went by, Eddie calmed down. He gazed at the darkening sky tensely. Where could he be? He was probably afraid to come back, for fear he might be scalded. Oh, Peter, my little foolish friend, said Eddie to himself. As time passed, the air became cooler, and the brisk wind caressed Peter's skin gently, while he slept in the shade of a bush. Oh, where am I? he asked himself as he woke up. The plantation! Oh, what have I done? he sobbed, wiping his streaming eyes on the back of his little paw. Oh, I always make trouble. Even though I just wanted to help, everybody must be furious at me. How oh, could I go back to the estate after all that? He blubbered. If Peter had known that he was accepted as he was, fumbling and scatterbrained, and that one friend was seriously worried about him, he might not have spent half of the night crying alone on the shore. But things like that happen when our imagination starts making us believe things that aren't true. Fear keeps us from enjoying the pleasures of life, great and small. Eddie, though, was a bright little mouse indeed, and he knew exactly where to look for his friend. He broke into a run straight towards the shore. As he ran, he noticed a shiny green pebble in the sand and picked it up. He found his best friend where he suspected. Peter was sat on the beach mourning, watching the ocean waves crashing against the shore with teary eyes. I met a seagull, said Eddie, breaking the silence. It gave me a pebble and told me to take care of it, because it would give me courage and help drive away fears. Eddie! How did you find me? Peter sniffled. It wasn't difficult. I know you like spending time on the beach. Everybody is so worried about you, Peter. Why did you run away without saying anything? Nobody is angry at you. Seriously? Yes, seriously. Here you are. You take this pebble. Oh, wow! Is it a magic pebble? Asked Peter excitedly. Something like that. If you carry it with you, you will become a brave hero, and you will never be afraid again. Peter believed his friend's encouraging words. As they headed back to the estate, Peter felt as if a positive power had pervaded his entire body, calming him down and giving him courage. It might be due to the magic power of the pebble, he thought. As he sniffed the tang of the sea air, he was enchanted by the scent as never before. For the first time in his life, he felt mesmerised by every single thing around him, which he had never noticed until now. The workers have organised a party for this evening. Would you like to join them? Of course, said Peter joyfully. I haven't danced for a long time. Let's hurry, he said, and started to run forward. The venue was decorated with cosy warm lights and colourful ribbon waves. Crickets were chirping in the lamplights and a cheerful young mouse girl was singing. Some of the mice were dancing in a circle, holding each other's paws, while the others were eating vast amounts of food. The paunchy mouse cried cheerfully when he saw Peter. My dear friend, come and eat with us! Oh, aren't you angry at me? Ah, what for? Such a thing could happen to anybody. Don't take it to heart. The festival went on until dawn. Peter won the coconut carving competition and did well in the dance contest where he had to execute complicated dance steps in a traditional grass skirt on stage. 
For the rest of the evening, Peter dared to wear his dorky duck print swim shorts proudly, and he gleefully talked to the locals about the other funny trousers in his collection. A few days later, Peter went down to the beach to think. It was time to say goodbye to the island. Eddie had managed to make fuel from coffee, so they were ready to fly back home. Peter wanted to see the ocean one last time. On the cold, foggy morning, the landscape evoked nice memories of his days on the island. Beyond the sandy beach, the cliff edges were adorned with small yellow flowers and unique rock formations. The huge boulders stretching across the coast served as bulwarks against the billows of the savage ocean. On the turquoise surface of the ocean, the form of the breaking waves looked like white lace and in the infinite distance it seemed like the ocean melted away into the dense grey clouds of mist. Flocks of seagulls were soaring on the wind, while others were standing and shrieking on the shining rocks. Gasping in admiration at the view, he felt completely at ease, and all the bad things that had ever happened in his life simply ceased to exist. With the waves of the ocean, all of his troubles had slowly swept away. At first, Peter attributed his transformation to the magic pebble. But he was clever enough to realize swiftly that thousands of similar pebbles were still lying on the beach. Learning to believe in himself, He could understand that the power wasn't in the pebbles, but only within him. Thank you so much for listening. Well, that was Tropic Thrills. I really hope you enjoyed it. This is just one in a series of books written and illustrated by Erica. The physical copy of the book features around 15 beautiful colour illustrations that certainly add even more charm and vibrancy to what I feel is already a very cosy and heartwarming little adventure. The links to her work are in the video description and in my pinned comment below, so do go take a look and let me know if you pick something up. As a fan of my audiobooks, Erica reached out to see if I'd like to read one of her books on my channel, and it turned out to be a fun opportunity for me to be able to narrate a story here that I felt a lot of you would enjoy while hopefully helping to bring some extra attention to a talented, independent artist. So, thank you so much to Erica Guernsey for reaching out to me. And if you would like me to produce some of your work, whether a short story, some poetry, a longer novel, 
perhaps a voiceover or a, a gift, something silly for someone, <laughs> some other piece that you can think of, then please do send an email to me at redfoxvoice at gmail.com. My links are in the about section of my YouTube channel, and I have various links in all the video descriptions of all my videos here on YouTube. So get in touch if you wish, and we can discuss a potential collaboration, something just like this one. It doesn't need to be shared on YouTube, it could be for various other means. So thanks again for listening. Do share your thoughts and feelings on Tropic Thrills and on my reading of it. You take care, wherever you are and whatever you're up to, and I'll read to you soon.